So, um, hi everybody, my name is Salvatore La Rosa, I'm Vice President of um, Research and Development for the Children's Tumor Foundation. And I would like to talk to you today about the Synodos Initiatives, the time science, uh, team science that um, the Foundation has invested in. As you know, we have now, I'm, I'm proud to say we have now five different Synodos projects. Three are for an F1, one for an F2, and one recently activated for uh, Schwannomatosis Spain. Um, I'll go briefly trying to explain all of this in others and where we stand. Um, for an F1, <coughs> we thought one of the main problem was <coughs> having a, an, an animal model that was able to recapitulate the um, disease we are serving humans in a species that is not a small animal like a, a, a mice, but the large animals that the FDA now requires for a speed approval of treatments. So two groups applied, and we have now two groups working on porcine model. So the first wine model for an F1. Two groups because they're using different approach, and we want to make sure that if one group fails, the other one has a chance to succeed. And I'm pleased to say that after we are already one year into the project, both groups have animal on ground, which show clear signs of an F1, in the same way that the, the phenotype that shows effect in into humans. <coughs> um, one group is working on University of Minnesota, the other group is working on in University of Iowa and South Dakota, and two models have um, Plexiform neurofibromas, one model, both shows cafe au lait spots that are classical for NF1 and some have already some bone issues and maybe um, some models already also show um, incidence of an optipathic glioma. So there is very high excitement. Now we have an instrument, a tool that will allow us to test compounds to have a better prediction of efficacy. The other group I want to talk to you is uh, the low-grade glioma and this group uh, came together to solve a very important problem which was characterization of low-grade gliomas and uh, which are very difficult to predict the outcome. Um, the challenge there was to have enough tissue uh, to characterize from a genomic perspective all of these tumors and understand what was the drivers behind the low-grade glioma. Now that we are, again, one year into the project, we, we already have 50% of those samples needed for the full characterization. And in the pipeline, they're acquiring more samples, so we are close to have the full analysis of the 50 samples that this group wants to put together. Um, the other group that is the most advanced is the Synodes NF2. This group has started in 2014, was the first Synodes reactivated, and now we are very close to the end. So activities should end around February. Um, things being the first uh, team effort that we put together was a little bit um, difficult to move at the same speed that now the other projects are moving, but I'm pleased to say that the group is close to a very uh, important discovery. We um, really put our muscles on the project, screen 2,000 compounds on um, cells, and now we have few combinations because we saw that um, the group saw that some agent, as a single agent, like a single drug, doesn't really do anything on these tumors, and we need a more aggressive, more uh, sustained effect. And the combination of two different drugs seems to have very, very important uh, effect on tumors, especially in meningiomas. That's the first model that is coming out now with results. So timelines for this, very exciting, is going to be by the end of the year, we're going to finish all the experiments. We have another two combinations to test. And as soon as those uh, um, results will be um, completed, there will be a scientific publication coming out and results will be shared with the community. So very exciting. I hope um, the group hopes by uh, next year to submit a grant to the Department of Defense to start the clinical trials if any of these combinations are really showing the progress that they're showing now. 
And then the last one I want to touch base is uh, the Schwannoma. Um, we received three applications from uh, three different consortia and the pre-review system selected a group in University of Toronto that are collaborating with University of, Flor uh, University of Florence, Manchester, and JHU and MGH. This group together are the most expert, um, best expert in schwannomatosis. But the focus of the proposal isn't shrinking schwannoma. The focus of the proposal is really to address pain in this patient's population. And this came out from a state-of-the-art conference we had on NF2 and schwannomatosis in 2016, where we organized a panel with patients, representative, and the patients ask the community to focus on pain and not on tumor shrinkage because the tumor is it doesn't really bother them as much as the pain which is really unbearable so the research community responded with very thoughtful proposal and now we are trying to characterize understand more about this schwannomas the idea is to collect 150 samples from a genomic perspective, so um, understand what are the signature and, and correlate with annotation of pain experience into the clinic of, of this of the same patient population and trying to cross these two data set of pain and genomic characterization to see if there is a pattern of genomic pain that we can understand. That's where we are. Uh, super excited, super busy with managing all of these projects, but um, the teams are now more than 20 institutions together, um, more than 40 PIs. In October, we are organizing um, uh, the first Synodos network where all of these groups will meet together, they will share data, they will share information, and will progress. And they will also have their internal review of the project to see if you know, um, the project is still valid to go on. So I hope to update you in the near future about how these projects are moving forward and there is hope. One last touch base on the MEC inhibitor. Um, as you may heard, there is um, a registration trial for selumetinib, a drug from AstraZeneca. The trial has completed um, and we, I think the group hopes to submit to the FDA a package of information that is ready for approval. We hope that in 2018, some point, normally it takes around six to nine months for the FDA to get full approval, um, we'll have the first drug approved for an F1. And this is for Plex from neurofibromas. We know, and I heard from <coughs> a meeting that was also at this conference from the Clinical Trial Consortium, that the same drug is being used for low leg gliomas, um, the, the, the tumors that are in the brain. And there are very promising results that this drug actually is efficacious also for this type of tumors. So the same drug, but also drugs mechanical from other com other company are showing the same effect. So it really reinforces the fact that MEC is a very useful target for NF1. And many drugs we want we want as many companies to put this compounds available for patients. So we are working with many um, pharmas to have their MEK inhibitors available for uh, studies in NF. So more to come, I hope, and um, very good news, exciting time. I think uh, there is hope um, to find something useful very soon.